Paolo Synthmania. Tonight I wanted to talk about how to sort of emulate the typical arpeggiator effect of um, 80s units such as uh, the Roland Juno 60 or the Korg Poly 6 or the Jupiter 8 and so forth, but using a um, sequencer module in a modular synth. Here below is my beloved um, synthesizer.com modular synthesizer that has um, sequencer modules in it. So let's build a patch and um, let's see how we can do this. It's a lot of fun to play in the studio. All right, here is uh, Brigitta, my synthesizer.com modular. And as you can see, there are uh, no patch chords. So let's build a quick patch. And let's build a really simple base patch with uh, one oscillator only. And uh, let's uh, pick a pulse waveform. And why not also a saw to give a little bit more body. And let's plug them into a mixer. From the mixer, as it's customary, we go into a filter. Let's pick this transistor ladder filter. This is a signal input. And from the filter, as it customary again, we go into an amplifier. And this yellow cable here is simply the output from the amplifier that goes to the audio interface to record on the computer. All right, now we have to control the oscillator in order to make it sound. And the way old fashioned analog synthesizers work is with a CV gate, control voltage and a gate. And basically for each octave, there is um, a one volt control voltage. So to control the pitch of uh, the oscillators. So we take a cable and we plug it into the CV gate output from this keyboard and we send it to the one volt per octave input of uh, the oscillator. However, we can still hear anything when you play the keyboard because we need to trigger envelopes that control the amplifier and even the filter. And basically the gate control is an on and off switch that tells the envelopes when to trigger the amplifier and the filter. This is a pretty typical center patch, basically one oscillator and a couple of envelopes, one envelope to control the filter envelope and um, another one to control the amplifier envelope. So let's go out from uh, the gate out of the keyboard here. And this time we connect to a multiple, which is this module here. And what it does, it connects all these points together, as you can see. So whatever you put here or here or here gets sent to the same place. We need to send the gate out to two envelopes. And so again, we take a couple of cables and we plug them into the gate input of each envelope generator. Then again, we take the outputs from uh, the envelope generators and we plug them into the control inputs of the filter and the amplifier. And now we should have sound from the keyboard. And it's always good to have two separate envelopes, uh, one for the filter and one for the amplifier. Let's try to come up with the bass sound here. We can add some resonance on the filter here. And so you can come up with different shapes of sounds.
this will do. Another thing that we can do to fatten the sounds further is to grab another oscillator, sine wave, and uh, set it to low frequency mode, and um, modulate the pulse width with it. So now you get the typical PWM sound. All right, now let's talk about the sequencer. This one is a Q119 sequencer. And uh, the scope here is um, basically to have the sequencer trigger the notes on, um, on the oscillator so you don't have to do it manually. And again, we're talking about CV and gate. So let's start with the gate first. This will trigger the notes on the keyboard. Hence, we no longer need the gate cable from the keyboard because the sequencer is going to do that for us. So we take the gate out of uh, this first row of eight steps and we plug it into the multiple where the gate from uh, the keyboard used to be. And now when we start the Q119, the sequencer will uh, trigger the notes for us so we don't have to keep hitting the keys. Now for the control voltage to control the pitch of the oscillator, we're still using the keyboard. So in this case, the sequencer is controlling the gate of the notes, the on and off repetitions of the notes, but the keyboard is controlling the pitch. So when I start it, you can um, see what happens. You can see how the keyboard is controlling the notes. If you wanted to control the pitch of the notes from uh, the sequencer, all you need to do is to take another cable and plug it into the output of this first row. And there are several ways to do this, but um, you can uh, connect the, the, the sequencer CV into another input on our trusty oscillator. And now when you start the sequencer, you get that typical 1970s Cosmician music uh, type of uh, feel. I don't even know what the notes are set to right now, but let's, let's give it a try. All right, let's uh, emulate uh, the 80s arpeggiator with a sequencer. The first thing, we don't need all the eight steps to emulate the classic uh, Juno 60 arpeggiator. Basically, for a basic arpeggio, you only need two steps. So on the Q119, just like the 960s above, you can set the end of uh, the last repetition. So let's set a number two, so only the first two steps will work. There you go. What now when you start the sequencer, only these two steps will work. Now let's set the second step one octave higher and you get the typical up down arpeggiator effect. you can use the keyboard in conjunction with the sequencer to emulate the up-down arpeggio. Let's start the sequencer. Here 
to the left of the modular we have a solina and we can use it to play some chords with my left hand while my right hand with the sequencer and the keyboard on the modular does the bass line such as this. Let's start with um, A. But we can also add a beat and here to the right of the modular we have a lindrum and all we need to do is to grab a cable and plug it into the trigger output from the lindrum and plug it into the source input of uh, the sequencer and then all we need to do is to switch to external sync now the 119 will be started by the Lindrum. And you can put all these three components together to do a little jam. Another cool thing that we can do is the double octave bass, also widely used in the 80s. And uh, for that, again, more than one way to do it, but um, 
On the Lean Drum, we can um, change the trigger from 1 8 to 16. So you go to BPM and change it to 16. So the 1 16. And back to the Q119, this time we're gonna set the end F4. So we're gonna have four steps for the double octave. So it's gonna be do 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 and so forth. So let's set the end at number four. And now we're gonna have only four steps working. Let me change it to internal for a sec. Notice the other two are out of whack, so let's change it. All we need to do is to change the notes. So the first two are gonna be low, and the second two are gonna be one octave high. That's close enough, I don't have the quantizer on at the moment. And now we can select a 16 beat on the lean drum. I think I have one on 11 here. And now when we trigger the sequencer, we get a typical double octave 80s bass. And why not, we can do another mini gem with a double octave bass. All right, that's it for tonight. Thank you very much for watching. If you have ideas, suggestions, and um, anything you wanna ask, please let me know in the comments below. I'll try to make it happen. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Mm -hmm.